everybody. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. Uh, thank you so much for all your responses about your Junko's uh, eating habits. It was really interesting to read about uh, what's happening in different states and in different provinces. So it looks like a lot of you see Junko's on bird feeders, but of course, the preferred uh, area to eat is on the ground. And now I have an interesting observation to share with you. So a few weeks ago when I was watching, you know, goldfinches, uh, pine siskins and red poles on my bird feeders, I noticed that my suet feeder and my nut feeder were not being touched at all. You know, they used it as a, as a perching area, but there were no woodpeckers, nut hatches or jays visiting uh, those feeders at all. So then when I took the seed feeders down to be washed and once all the finches had dispersed, the jays, nuthatches, and woodpeckers came back. So I thought, all right, I am not going to put up the seed feeders back in the same location because I've actually missed the woodpeckers, nuthatches, and jays. So now uh, finches are feeding elsewhere and we're just enjoying woodpeckers, nuthatches, and jays. So this is just um, a suggestion. If you're finding that you're not seeing certain birds, perhaps they're being displaced by other birds. There is a pecking order. And you know, normally when jays show up, all the other birds disperse. But this was not the case uh, here. Uh, I guess there were just too many finches around. So try it out, move your feeders around, change the location to attract specific birds or maybe Maybe keep some of the birds away from the birds that you like to feed. Um, often when people ask me how to keep jays away, I say, well, if you have a nut feeder, take it somewhere else. Or if you don't have a nut feeder, a peanut feeder, put one up somewhere away from your regular feeding station and that will keep jays busy. In February, Pamela Riley in North Carolina saw two hawks hanging out on her neighbor's bell. So she's just curious to find out, first of all, what kind of hawks uh, they might be, what exactly they were doing there, were they coming maybe to snatch her feeder birds, and whether hawks actually mate for life. Hi, Pamela. Thanks for your interesting observation. It certainly does ring a bell for me. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Let's start with the bird's identity. You certainly have got it right that they are hawks and not falcons, and you might just be bang on with your suggestion of a broad-winged hawk. These soaring beautio species take all sorts of critters opportunistically, as opposed to a sharp shin hawk, a smaller slender bird capable of rapid short sprints to catch birds, especially those frequenting feeders. Both of your species do breed in forest habitat and possibly backyards in your neck of the woods, but I somehow doubt that a slow-moving broad-winged hawk would feast upon your feeder birds. The two photos you provided are extremely grainy, but I think we can rule out the sharp shin hawk. You see, adult specimens of both species certainly do have a reddish tinge breast, which is suggested in your photos, but the bird just seems too chunky overall. Its tail is also too short and broad. Moreover, I think I could detect a couple of wide tail bands too. You might also consider another bird, the red-shouldered hawk. Now, on to the next part of the mystery. What were the birds doing and why were they seemingly interested in a large metal bell? I think we have to rule it anything to do with breeding. Broadwings generally do not start breeding until late April and you saw these birds in February. Perhaps one bird was using the bell as a feeding post and departed from it leaving a small tidbit or two which attracted the other birds interest. Speaking of seeing two birds, they could just be members of a pair hanging about their territory over winter but just not hormonally stimulated enough to undergo courtship. Or they could be a couple of migrant birds from up north who just like your habitat in winter. You also asked me one other question about whether birds of prey mated for life. A quick answer is no. The two members of any given pair usually tie themselves to a particular breeding territory and then show up there when it's time to mate. If one dies, it gets replaced by a member of a floating unmated population sometimes rather quickly. Now, here's an idea worth crowing about. I've been arguing for years that corvids, like crows, ravens, magpies, and jays, are probably the smartest birds on the planet, even surpassing the parrots, depending, of course, who you talk to and how one is actually measuring intelligence. A Swedish entrepreneur named Christian Gunther Hansen has founded a company called Corvid Cleaning, and his on-the-ground employees are smart, they don't complain or talk back, and they're small in stature, and thus with no huge metabolic demands. 
In short, Gunther Hansen has invented a method to train crows to pick up cigarette butts and other litter. And there's a big demand for the service, mainly because litter removal is a major expense in any large populated urban center. For example, one Swedish city, whose name I can't begin to pronounce, spends 20 million Swedish kroner, or about 2.2 million US, on street cleaning every year. And unbelievably in today's world, over 60% of this debris is cigarette butts. The enterprising businessman has created a machine which rewards the local wild New Caledonia crows for each butt they remove from the streets and place in the special trash can. With a level of intelligence equivalent to a seven-year-old human, these birds can be trained by the reward system, and even better, they learn the cleaning behavior from one another. Potentially, they could save the city about three-quarters of their litter retrieval costs related to cigarette butts alone. Currently, a trial is underway to assess the idea. For example, it might not be healthy for the crows to consume the butts, either accidentally or on purpose. I do like the wry comment from one waste strategist with the city who quips that it's interesting that we can teach crows to pick up cigarette butts, but we're not able to train humans not to throw the butts on the ground in the first place. One other advantage of using crows is that they won't be calling for any raises anytime soon because they certainly possess no concept of money. On the other hand, recent studies have shown that they apparently do understand the concept of zero. Have you ever confused an evening grows beak and a pine grows beak? I do it all the time. Their colors in their names just don't match. For me, uh, the pine color is kind of a dark yellowish and then the evening color is this purplish uh, pinkish color. But with these birds, it's the opposite. So pine grows beaks are pink and then evening grows beaks are yellow. But uh, for evening grows beaks, their color actually has nothing to do with their name. Long time ago, it was believed, and it's not actually true, that evening grows beaks would only sing in the evening. Another confusing thing about these birds is the family they belong to. And I actually blame rose-breasted grows beaks, uh, blue grows beaks, and black-headed grows beaks for that, because these three belong to the cardinal family. So a lot of people assume that pine and evening grows beaks also belong to the cardinal family, but they don't. They belong to the finch family, you know, where with all the finches, red poles, pine siskins, crossbills. And uh, just like many finches, they're nomads, so they can be seen all over United States and Canada throughout the year, but they do tend to breed on the West Coast. It's pretty easy to tell uh, females and males apart. This is a very typical case when males are super bright with lots of yellow on their body and they have this impressive yellow brow. And then females are kind of duller with just a little bit of, you know, a few hints of yellow on their back. And males are just a tad larger than females. Evening grosbeaks absolutely love larvae that can be found on trees. They also eat small fruit, buds and seeds from trees, especially maples. They go gaga over seeds from box elder maple, uh, which is actually a native tree here in North America. It produces a lot of seeds that last a long time. So if you want to attract uh, evening grosbeaks to your backyard, consider planting a box elder maple. Uh, these birds also come to bird feeders. Uh, Helen Heisek shared her photos with us. She used to see them on a regular basis, but in the past few years, they've been kind of sporadic. She saw a small group of them at her bird feeders in the fall of 2020, and then another small group in May of 2021. On average, evening grows big start breeding in mid-May, but just like many finches, they can continue breeding until August. Nests are built really high up in trees and hard maples are preferred. Uh, females do all the construction, they lay two to five eggs and they incubate. Males, however, do feed their wives and they stick around to defend the nest. Both parents feed the chicks and they clean the nest together as well. Uh, baby birds fledge when they're about 13 to 14 days old. 
In the winter, the more north you travel, the more male evening growth peaks you will see. Females tend to spend their winters in milder climates because they're not as cold tolerant as the males. And besides, males become so dominant over females in the winter. Check out this picture by Steve Jenkins from Ontario. It was taken in October. More males there than females. Oh, our poor judges on this photo contest. The pictures were absolutely stunning and the votes were really split. So let's check out the top five of showing off my best side. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. Just a quick reminder, if you take the first place in our photo contest, we ask you not to participate for the rest of the year. And April is Birds of the World. All right, everyone, time to wrap up. Let me know if you've played with your feeder configuration and placements and what kind of dinner clientele that attracted or which birds actually stopped coming. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.